for every loved late night host. Amazing things will happen. I'm telling you, there is one who is hated by everyone. I you. First of all, you smell good, which is surprising. <laughs> Why is that Still, surprising? I don't know. Starting with James Corden, who would become one of the most despised late night TV hosts because of his terrible on and off screen behavior. Name two of the cameramen in this room. <laughs> <laughs> After taking over The Late Late Show in 2015, Corden's Carpool Karaoke became a massive hit, where he joyfully drove around singing with megastars. It's so secret that the both of us... But behind his fun-loving image, Corden was shockingly different off-screen. When the presenters are up here, and when the recipients are receiving their awards, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wished you were anywhere but here. Oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. But the worst incident that exposes true character happened on October 17th, 2022, when New York restaurateur Keith McNally publicly banned him from his restaurant. James Corden is a hugely gifted comedian, but a tiny cretin of a man and the most abusive customer to my Balthazar servers since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. I don't often 86 a customer, to today I 86 Corden. It did not make me laugh. This inspired many to share similar experiences. It's not a fame thing making him this way either. I had a run-in with him at a hotel 20 plus years ago. He basically said I had gone into his room while he slept and stole a video cassette. He verbally abused me for a good 10 minutes before a lackey found his tape in the car. No apology, he just turned around and waddled off. Despite privately apologizing to Keith, Corden would confuse the internet by later claiming that he hadn't done anything wrong on any level. When Keith fired back, anything wrong on any level, was he joking? Or was he denying being abusive to my servers? The now unpopular host would explain himself. I've been walking around thinking that I hadn't done anything wrong, right? But the truth is, like I have, I made a rude, com rude comment. And it was wrong, it was, it was an unnecessary comment. It was ungracious to the server. But the internet knew he wasn't sincere. He's only apologizing because he got called out. I'm sure all these celebrities always get away with so much shit just because of who they are. So much respect for the owner for standing up to this toxic behavior. In the end, Corden's bad behavior ruined his reputation. So much so that when he left the Late Late Show in 2023, many celebrated. That's right, it's finally over. We, we've survived the bubonic plague of bad television. James Corden's show is off the air officially. It was clear that Corden couldn't live up to his predecessor, Craig Ferguson, as many people were hoping for his return instead. Hosting The Late Late Show from 2004 to 2014, Craig Ferguson always made guests comfortable with his sharp yet wholesome humor. Hey, you look sensational. I like that you're wearing plaid. Thank you, sir. For you, you eyes. Ah, right. I mean, we, you don't know that. The thing is, your Scottish accent is so good, I don't understand what you're saying. That's how good it is. Right, 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 right. And every start of the show, he would set the mood with a funny improvised monologue. If you want uh, something, uh, what is it? If you want uh, something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. If you want absolutely nothing said or done, ask a cat. <laughs> But on February 20th, 2007, Ferguson took a serious turn when Britney Spears was all over the headlines for shaving her head and checking in and out of rehab. For me, comedy should have a certain amount of joy in it. It should be about, uh, about us attacking the powerful people, attacking the politicians and the, and the Trump. We should be attacking the vulnerable people. So tonight, no Britney Spears jokes. Making fans respect him even more. The audience will laugh at anything, literally anything. That's how this format of talk show becomes so dangerous, because it allows people to think that laughing at anything is right. I love Craig for telling them this is not a joke, and while they kept laughing, he insisted in keeping the monologue serious, somber, and informative. But if Craig Ferguson knew when not to use comedy, this next host pushed it too far. Howard Stern, the self-proclaimed king of all media, became famous in the 1980s for his radio show. Why am I different from other DJs? Yeah. Because I fart on the air. The host's fame, however, was tied to offensive jokes, especially during tragedies like the Columbine shooting incident in 1999. There was like really good looking girls running out of there with their hands over their heads. Did those kids try to have sex with any of the good looking girls? They didn't even do that. At least if you're going to go kill yourself and kill all the kids, like, why wouldn't you have some sex? Yeah, I mean, if I was going to kill some people, I'd take them out with some sex.
Even female celebrities weren't safe from his sharp tongue, as he once made intrusive comments about pop star Emma Bunton's private life. You weren't a virgin when you joined no. the band, were you? And actress Anna Nicole Smith's weight. The way you dress and stuff, I don't think you're aware that you're a heavyset woman. As more of Howard Stern's past interviews resurfaced recently, many people couldn't help but feel disgusted. Seriously, anyone who's actually listened to Stern knows being terrible is the theme of the show. This one is like saying Jackass was full of dumb stunts meant to hurt someone. But even the host knew this, leading him to quote-unquote change himself through therapy, which he detailed in a book he released in 2019. At that point, my attitude was it was a scorched earth policy. I'm going to blow you out of the water. I'm going to be pure id and bam, let it all out. That was my approach to radio. It doesn't sound like you like that guy that much. Uh, I'm not in love with that guy that much, and it's hard for me. I never was in love with myself. I have learned through therapy, maybe I could love myself a bit and love what I'm doing. Despite this, the internet knew he had an evil motive. Narcissists use therapy as a way to talk about themselves. Howard doesn't want to get better or change. He wants people in his life to acknowledge that he's the center of their lives. He uses therapy to better understand how to manipulate those around him. Stern was despised for relying on offending others for attention, unlike the next one on the list who would win the hearts of many for his different yet memorable approach. When Conan O'Brien started late night in 1993, he became popular for his awkward, self-deprecating humor. Something's wrong. Something's really wrong. <laughs> No, I'm fine, really. I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> no! All right. Well, I've been in show business now 45 seconds, and this is the nicest reception I ever had. And his hilarious sketches. One of the greatest things about uh, security guards is they get to carry around that, that ring of keys that sort of open anything. Do you have one of those? Oh, yeah, we've got our keys. What do you got? Yeah, we're not many. About Let me see that. Hold that there. up. Jingle that. we got about 10 on here, that's all. Yeah? Check this out. This opens every door in New York City. Aside from that, he also knew how to make his guests feel comfortable. You've, you know, you've been making some money over the years. Have any of you gone a little money, a little mad and bought yourself something crazy or, you know, just to, to treat yourself? I, I can't compete with this. Rupert bought an ice cream truck. <laughs> I'm not even he bought an ice cream truck? That is every Rupert. kid's fantasy. I know, literally. Which fans also noticed. She started the interview literally at the edge of her seat. By the time she finished, she's sitting back and relaxed. This man just ran a masterclass on conversation. But in 2009, O'Brien became the new host of The Tonight Show, succeeding Jay Leno, which later resulted in a ratings issue. And I just want to say to the kids out there watching, you can do anything you want in life. Yeah. Yeah, unless Jay Leno wants to do it too. <laughs> NBC addressed this by moving Leno back to his old time slot with The Jay Leno Show and pushing The Tonight Show with Conan O'Brien to a later time, forcing the host to release a statement. I sincerely believe that delaying The Tonight Show into the next day to accommodate another comedy program will seriously damage what I consider to be the greatest franchise in the history of broadcasting. O'Brien then left the show on January 22, 2010. We had a lot of fun being here these last seven months, but like everything in life, the fun has to come to an end a decade too early, and I think that's... After Leno got the show back, Conan would return to late-night television 10 months later, but on a different network. People ask me why I named the show Conan. I did it so I'd be harder to replace. <laughs> and his fans showed great support. Getting canned from NBC was the best thing that ever happened for him. He did his best work in the years following. TBS have him complete creative control. But beyond standing up for himself, what truly set Conan apart was his genuine off-screen behavior. An intern for Conan? I was an intern for Conan O'Brien my junior year of uh, college. This summer? He's one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet. He is Love so it. kind and so genuine. And during the 2007 writer's strike, he paid the salaries of affected employees with his own money. But if Conan was praised for going the extra mile for his staff, this next host would be criticized for creating a toxic workplace. After The Ellen DeGeneres Show premiered in 2003, Ellen quickly built a reputation as the queen of nice for acts of kindness and charity. So I heard, um, so this was exciting, but you went to the Ellen shop and you said you wanted to buy everything that was in there, right? Yeah. One, one of everything that was in there? Yeah. Well, I don't think you should have to buy one of everything. I'm going to give you one of everything. <laughs> which was why she won the People's Choice Humanitarian Award in 2016. But I have to say, it's, it's a little strange to actually get an award for being nice and generous and kind, which is what we're all supposed to do with one another. That's, 
the point. But on November 17, 2019, her nice image would start to slip during an interview with Dakota Johnson. You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. No. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> the public perception changed. Ellen is just not a good person. Dakota definitely handled her uncomfortable questions with class. And it only got worse in 2020, when comedian Kevin T. Porter exposed her for being notoriously one of the meanest people alive. Toxic, phony, hypocrite, liar. That's what she is. Her former employees soon came forward to support this claim, revealing they were fired after taking medical leave or bereavement days to attend family funerals during the COVID-19 pandemic, forcing Ellen to quote-unquote apologize. I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected, I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. The truth is, I am that person that you see on TV. I am also a lot of other things. I, sometimes I get sad, I get mad, I, I get anxious, I get frustrated, I get impatient, and I am working on all of that. But the internet just hated her even more. She's acting like the toxic work environment had nothing to do with her, while it's actually because of her. This led to losing viewers and her show ending on May 26th, 2022. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. I feel the love and I send it back to you. Bye. Although Ellen's rude behavior destroyed her career, the next host's authenticity made him a delight to both guests and viewers. Since 2007, British talk show host Norton has been running The Graham Norton Show, which gained popularity because of its interesting format. His brilliant interviews were often done on a big red sofa, which made his guests feel safe to share even their most embarrassing stories. David, did that hair bring you back? Yeah, I've had a <laughs> I've definitely had that look. You fight your beauty, and you often use the medium of hair. To fight you oh, I've had some of the worst hairdos in film. Do you really have? Yeah, no, genuine. Like if Empire Magazine did top 10 worst hairdos in film, I'm definitely three of those. <laughs> this made his chat show superior, with fans admiring his style. By the way, this is the best time I've ever had on the talk show. Oh, Even fellow late night host Seth Meyers praised Norton's ability to make his guests comfortable like no other. In my head, when I think of famous people and the most embarrassing story they've told on a chat show, it's always on yours. And when the host refused to take credit. But I think that is because of the other guests. They yeah. are, they're trying to outdo each other. His fans knew he was just being humble. Graham is self-deprecating. The guests on his show are comfortable because he's a great host. Many a guest have said so to him. Norton knew how to make his guests relax, a sharp contrast to the upcoming host, who is known for making celebrities uncomfortable. Kimmel began his comedy career and became famous for hosting Jimmy Kimmel Live, where he often performed comedy sketches with celebrities. Yeah, this one's going out to all my homies in Compton. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, do, do you know hmm? anybody? Do you know anybody? Compton? From Compton? No, no I don't know anybody. Yeah, you might not want to say that then. Oh. Thanks to his success on late night TV, he was soon invited to host big events like the Oscars. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. I'm excited. I've never been to the Oscars before. This is my first time here. And the way you people go through host is probably my last time here. So I'm going to enjoy this while I'm here. After a successful first time, Kimmel was invited back for a second and third stint. But by his fourth time hosting the 2024 Oscars, he would cross the line. And congratulations to Silly Ann's co-star, Robert Downey Jr., who is... This night is... This is the highest point of Robert Downey Jr.'s long and illustrious career. Well, one of the highest points. Um, but... <laughs> Robert has been a... Was that two on the nose, or is that a drug motion you made? <laughs> While RDJ himself didn't mind, it didn't stop the internet from hating the host. Kimmel was way out of line with that comment about RD's addiction, 
That's not humor, but merely an insult to a person who is an inspiration to the recovery community. That's not funny and shouldn't be considered a joke. I don't approve of Smith's actions, but some people like Kimmel here haven't been punched into the face frequently enough. My mom always told me, something can be considered a joke when it's funny to all parties involved. It's a good thing Kimmel stepped down from returning for a fifth time, sparing the celebrities from his tasteless jokes. But if Kimmel was hated for not knowing when to step back, the next person would be loved for being fearless, even through controversy. Following his big break on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, Colbert was given his own show in 2005 called The Colbert Report, where he created a satirical alter ego. The truthiness is, anyone can read the news to you. I promise to feel the news at you. Using this persona, he fearlessly mocked the former President Bush during the White House Correspondents' Dinner. This president has a very forward-thinking energy policy. Why do you think he's down on the ranch cutting that brush all the time? He's trying to create an alternative energy source. By 2008, we will have a mesquite-powered car. Which earned him praise from fans. The amazing thing about this isn't just his material, it's how fearlessly he delivers it into an incredibly unreceptive room full of very powerful people. When Colbert took over The Late Show in 2015, he had fun interviews with celebrities. Now, you and I uh, share one other thing in common, is we love, um, we love pretending that we're throwing up. Oh my god. You yeah. don't understand, my husband and I are obsessed with your puke takes. It's just our favorite thing, we do it all okay. the time. Would you rather have feet for hands, or hands for feet? Hands for feet. Yeah, because if you had feet for hands, it would be really hard to tie the shoelaces that were on your hands. On May 2nd, 2017, however, the host had a few words for the president. Mr. Trump, your presidency, I love your presidency. You have more people marching against you than cancer. You talk like a sign language gorilla who got hit in the head. In fact, the only thing your mouth is good for is being Vladimir Putin's holster. Which soon triggered a train of hashtag fire Colbert tweets. Colbert must go after his un-American, disgusting homophobic rant on POTUS. Despite this, many sided with him. If you think Colbert should be fired for insulting Trump, please present your argument to your microwave for consideration. And upon investigation, the Federal Communications Commission took no action against the remark because it didn't violate the standard operating procedure. Colbert would then celebrate his return. Still? Am I still the host? I'm still the host! <laughs> and would go on that he had no regrets about insulting Trump. So while I would do it again, I would change a few words that were cruder than they needed to be. Now, I'm not gonna repeat the phrase, but I just wanna say, for the record, life is short, and anyone who expresses their love for another person in their own way is to me an American hero. And I think we can all agree on that. I hope even the president and I can agree on that. Nothing else but that. Still the host. Damn straight you are. Takes more than that to disappear Stephen Colbert. In the end, Colbert was appreciated for handling accusations thrown at him, unlike Jimmy Fallon, who would find himself under increasing scrutiny. When Fallon took over from Jay Leno in 2009, he brought an energetic vibe with playful skits and celebrity games, like Wheel of Musical Impressions. Then here we go. All right, all right. Be merciful. Slot machine. Michael Jackson. Oh. Sesame Street, man. <laughs> you wanna go? And lip sync battle. Because of his fun vibe to late night television, Fallon became instantly liked. But that would change when people started noticing how he connected, or more accurately, disconnected with his guests. And his belly goes in my mouth. <laughs> Co-hosting the Oscars with James Franco. <laughs> it genuinely does sound like he's being held at gunpoint to laugh. Jimmy is that person who laughs at funerals. Even Ricky Gervais saw right through his insincerity. Oh, thank you, you very look much. Rich? I look great. Yeah. Is that sarcasm? No, it wasn't. You see, 
You see, this is the thing with you, and it's talk show, oh, you look great, even though, you, look at me, of course I don't look great. And it would only get worse on September 8th, 2023, when his former staff came forward to expose him. According to a scathing Rolling Stone article published Thursday morning, 16 current and former employees of The Tonight Show say Fallon's on-air likable persona is a facade. The anonymous sources describe a toxic work environment where Fallon would act erratic and dismissive. Forcing the host to apologize to his employees through a Zoom call, saying, It's embarrassing and I feel so bad. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. Fallon, however, only got more backlash for his fakeness. The final host on the list, on the other hand, would get applauded for how genuine he was, even in the most awkward times. Letterman's career started with stand-up comedy. His sharp humor quickly got him noticed, leading to his big break on late-night television. Uh, welcome to the show. You folks are apparently a bright group, bright enough at least to read the applause sign, and I certainly... <laughs> His show, Late Night with David Letterman, launching in 1982, truly changed late night TV. His fun segments, like Stupid Pet Tricks, became a hit. Uh, what are you guys going to do for us tonight, Abe? Well, Sparky's going to act like a dog possessed by the devil. Whoa! <laughs> Sparky, where's Satan? Where is he? Where's Satan? Where's Satan? Where is he? Where is he? Where's Satan? Back to normal. <laughs> Would you like to pet him again? <laughs> but Letterman's most memorable moments were his amazing interviews, especially with notorious talk show hater Harrison Ford on June 22, 1982. How did, I mean, when you're going by and you see an Indiana Jones mug or something, is that, uh, what is that? <laughs> Nothing. I don't take it personally. <laughs> it does, uh, have, I don't have any relationship to it. I can't figure out what, what it has to do with me. Yeah. Knowing Ford hated dull moments, Letterman always knew how to keep him entertained. Yeah, yeah. And do you get um, that maybe this is not a question? But I steal them. You take me to this? Do you get any... And then I tell him that it's me and it's a very involved problem. Do you get any dough for that? For appearing uh, your likeness on those mugs? Let's not talk about money. <laughs> <laughs> making fans praise his great social skills. I love this. This is why Letterman was known as the anti-talk show. He had no problem with awkwardness. He knew the absurdity of interviewing uninterested actors about movies they were plugging. He played with it, and it was no wonder that Harrison Ford, Bruce Willis, Robert De Niro, even Madonna, celebrities who were infamously difficult to interview, still visited Letterman in the later years. Refreshing to watch a late night interview with a star who refuses to fake laugh or smile at every little thing. And because of his humor and authenticity, it was no wonder why Letterman was considered one of the best late night hosts of all time.